Hello and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and on this week's episode, I'm joined by Dairy Calf Beef Farmer, Aidan Maguire, to discuss his farming system and get an update on the farm. I first asked Aidan to describe his farming system. I'm farming 55 hectares of between owned and leased land here just outside Navan in County Mead and 35 acres of that is forestry as well. So uh, I'm basically farming a, calf, a dairy calf to beef system, buying in calves at three weeks of age and bringing them through to slaughter at 19 to 25 months of age. And what kind of calves are you buying? Mainly Frisian, Frisian males, uh, Angus male and female and her- black white male and females. Or Hereford male and females. And as part of the Green Acres farm plan that you've drawn up with your advisor, James Fitzgerald, how many calves have you bought in this year? This year I've bought just over 120, 30 in the autumn and uh, 90 in the spring. That's the plan. And when do you intend to buy in calves this autumn? The, the first of them, I just after booking them there today, they'll uh, be ready around mid October. So I hope to maybe go up to 50 calves in the autumn now and uh, maybe 70 in the springtime just to share out the workload. And it has been a difficult few weeks. How have you coped in the past number of weeks managing with drought conditions? Well, lucky enough, I'm measuring grass with the Grass 10 programme and uh, it has flagged <laughs> the shortfall that was coming in good time and uh, I've managed to feed silage and keep grass in the diet at the same time. I've been feeding silage now for the last four weeks due to the drought. Aidan, when you're working off farm, you really are in the busy season contracting and feeding out bales adds in additional work. How are you managing that? I start very early in the morning, Catherine. (laughs) Cattle were being moved either uh, every day or every second day. And as the animals moved into a paddock, I'd supply them with two bales of silage as they went into the paddock. And it kind of uh, guaranteed me two days feeding in that paddock. That's how I did it. So I start early in the morning. And how many cattle are in each of the groups that you're managing? Uh, I've recently divided out the heifers off one of the groups. So there's now one large group of 80 uh, 18 month old bullocks, and there's a uh, one group of uh, 30 uh, 18 month old heifers at the moment. Plus, there's um, two groups of young calves, plus two autumn groups as well. So, there's basically six groups out there. With the recent rainfall, what is your plan for the coming weeks? At the moment, I haven't done a grass walk on Sunday. Grass is actually nearly back to growing properly again thank god and uh, i'll continue on feeding silage for another few days anyway till the average farm cover rises but uh, fertilizer very important and i'm getting out slurry on the bare ground i'm topping the paddocks that were weren't topped in the last three rotations just to get them back into quality stuff and when they are topped when the cattle are moved off and to- the paddock is topped i'm spreading slurry on that so that seems to be working well at the moment and how much fertilizer are you going with on this rotation I will probably go with 27 to 30 units. I haven't spread fertilizer during the drought and it's instantly (laughs) visible now this week. You you can see the ground that hasn't had fertilizer in over a month and it's starting to show up yellow, a pale, shall we say. Aidan, has the drought impacted on your animal performance? I don't think so, Catherine, in the sense that I have very good quality silage left over from last year. It's at least 72 DMD and uh, I've kept it with the cattle along with fresh grass and they really are. We waited in July and I was really pleased with the performance of them. So I think I don't think they have suffered yet anyway. And what weight gain were they achieving? Uh, The majority of the cattle were between 0.9 and 1.1 kgs per day from from turnout so and the calves have done very nicely there 0.7 to 0.8 kgs per day uh, so i'm very pleased with that exceptional weight gains and for the calves to be achieving 0.8 of a kilo per head per day what have you been doing to achieve these gains Basically, apart from <laughs> they've been vaccinated when they uh, when they come as calves, and it has kept them so healthy, it has made life very easy. And uh, since they, they were also uh, early born calves, they were January February calves, so they were in 
a good position to, to make use of grass when I let them out. And I keep fresh grass in front of them, basically. They're not, they are now uh, starting to create a demand for grass, but uh, they've had fresh grass and nice grass in front of them all year. So I put a lot of it down to that, Catherine. And are you feeding the Mila grass at the moment? I've separated out, there was 90 springborn calves there, and I separated out the 45 smallest, shall we say, the probably February born calves. And they're on a kilo of meal a day, every day since they went out. And the other 45 are on grass only. So that's the way it is. There's half of them are on meal at the moment. And what is your plan for stock that you'll be finishing in the coming weeks or for the rest of the year? We literally haven't separated out the 30 heifers there from the main group. They, I'll start feeding them now towards the end of this week. I'll build them up to maybe three kilos per head on uh, a beef finishing nut. And they should be ready. They should be ready in six or seven weeks, Catherine, the way they're thriving at the moment. And in how much concentrates are you feeding them at the moment? I've, ju- I've just about, I'll be starting at the end of this coming week. Catherine is just uh, getting in a load. Of, I have to get in a load of nuts just for them. So I'll be starting maybe um, next Monday or so. It'll probably be the first of the feeding. And how many kilos do you start with or how do you build it up? I'll build it up. I'll go with one kilo a day. They'll be fed in the field at grass. So I'll just literally go with 30 kilos for the first maybe three days, four days if everything's going well. Uh, build them up, to, uh, slowly build them up over uh, probably a week to 10 days before they're on three kilos per head per day. And how do you move the feeders then from paddock to paddock as you're rotating? Uh, I literally, with the teleporter, I, I lift up, like it'll take three, it'll tre- take three double troughs to give them comfort while eating. So I'll be lift, lift, literally moving them with uh, the teleporter. Perfect. And what is your target slaughter weight and age for these heifers? They'll be in the target weight would be in around 255 kgs dead, you know, and, and it, they'll be just coming up to 19 months. The whole 30 of them won't make it at the, you know, immediately. But over the next the, over the next three months, I hope to have the 30 of them shifted under 20 months of age. And as you mentioned earlier, grass is a key focus on your farm. This year you've sown some red clover silage mix. How is that performing? So far, Catherine, it, it has performed lovely. I've uh, it grew nice and clean. I had uh, I didn't need a clover safe spray on it due to uh, drum uh, Drummond's man Bill Riley looked at it and said no, it was clean enough, so there was no need to weed spray it, and it grew on nicely at a cover of 800, 700 to eight hundred. We grazed it with sixteen month old cattle on lovely dry conditions, and it, they cleaned it out perfectly. So it's now there's now at the moment there's now a full crop of silage on it at a cover of a two and a half thousand kgs so uh, it's ready for mowing and baling now and then i'll cover it again with slurry only and take a late cut off it at the end of september and how do you intend to feed this this winter i'm really hoping catherine that it'll be so good or so high in dmd that i won't need to feed me weanlin's meal along with it but it'll be tested and we'll see it'll be fed out to the young stock most the 90 springborn calves that's where that's where it's targeted and uh, hopefully it'll be of high dmd most definitely that's great Aidan. and finally what are the three things that you're going to be focusing on on your farm in the coming weeks uh, well, the first thing you'll be getting the farm set up for the autumn and spring grazing, like try and build covers to extend the grazing into the into November, shall we say. It was the 13th of November last year when I closed the farm. And uh, then it'll be getting the cattle, picking the groups of cattle and getting them onto the finishing diet. And then basically getting the last of the slurry out and the last round of protected urea out, which should set me up nicely for the winter. And the covers that you're building now in August, when will you start closing those paddocks up? Probably, I know it'll be the end of September, depending on growth. But uh, the end of September is marginally early for me. But at the same time, uh, I'd rather hedge be bets if there is a good cover there. I'll start closing around the end of uh, September 
hoping to have an average farm cover of maybe 11, 1200 at that stage. I start closing paddocks. I love to get out early in the springtime. I was out on the 24th of January this year, and I'd be aiming to do the same for next year. So I don't mind carrying reasonably heavy cover over the winter. That's a, like the, last year's winter was really only two months long. That's fantastic. Thanks a million, Aidan. No matter. That's all for this week's episode. And my thanks to Aidan for joining me on the show. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our Beef program, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.